The Toronto Film Critics Association have released their best of 2023 list. Ryan Gosling is more than just Ken. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. Can I need a clicky pen? No. A sharp pen. And Gosling won outstanding supporting performance alongside Davine Joy Randolph for the film The Holdovers, Best Picture and Best Director, went to Jonathan Glazer's The Zone of Interest, a film about the comfortable life of a Nazi commandant's family. It stars Sandra Huller, but it was her work in the French courtroom drama Anatomy of a Fall, which won her outstanding lead performance. And for more on the Toronto Film Critics Association's picks, we're joined by their president, Joanna Schneller. Uh, Joanna, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, as we were talking about before the break, it's been a really good year for movies. This much-anticipated list is out. So let's begin with the winner in the best film category. And talk to us about the runners-up as well, if you can. Sure. I mean, we are an organization of 44 people. That includes active members and some emeritus members. And we all have a lot of varied tastes. So we have very, um, I'm going to say spirited conversations <laughs> about who should win and why. So there were lots and lots of debate. All of our votes are very, very close. So the zone of interest, we all found to be an incredibly powerful film, uh, a really meaningful film now in that it shows you just the limits of people's self-interests and, and what they're willing to ignore in terms of their own self-interest. So that makes it re very relevant to today. Um, but we, it, it was very close runner up with Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon and um, All of Us Strangers, a very beautiful British film about a gay man coming to terms with his, the loss of his parents and, and finding love. So it, it, just a wide range of films uh, that I think really refl reflect 2023. OK, Joanna, don't hate me too much. we got to talk about the fan Barbie picking up a few wins. I still haven't seen it yet, but don't worry. It's on my list. It's on my list. OK. Yes. I mean, again, in a year where we recognize this heavy Holocaust drama, we also gave our best screenwriting um, uh, original uh, screenplay award to Barbie. <laughs> so as you can see, we are wide open and uh, performers as varied as Ryan Gosling and Divine Joy Randolph won our outstanding supporting performance ad, uh, award. So this year we did something different. Um, we used to have the traditional um, best actor and actress and supporting actor and actress gendered categories. Like a lot of critics groups this year, we decided not to do gender categories. So we are awarding two best lead performance and two best supporting performance, no gender needed, um, but the same number of, of awards. Okay, let's talk about the best lead performance now. Well, I mean, again, that was super close. Uh, we had six nominees, but everybody was really blown away by Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon and also Sandra Uller in Anatomy of a Fall. Um, both of those are movies that really hinge on the performance of, uh, of those actresses and um, it, it just really powerful work in, in very different ways from both of them. Uh, so I think, again, we're really showing the breadth of what's out there. And then best performance in a Canadian film. Yes, this was another new uh, award for us this year because we had felt that there were a lot of strong Canadian films out there. And unfortunately, a lot of the people who act in them get overshadowed by their U.S. counterparts when it comes to award season. So it was a real thrill for us to be able to add a best performance in a Canadian film. Everybody was crazy about Blackberry. There was a lot of debate between um, Glenn Howerton and Jay Baruchel. And, um, of course, Theodore Pellerin also anchors the film solo. So that was one of our longer, more spirited debates. And um, Glenn Howerton, the force of his performance is Jim Balsillie, the, the, the active volcano-like mm. quality that he brings that really animates that film. Um, ultimately, that grabbed us. All right. And, and before we let you go, we talked about the diversity, the variety for movie buffs. How would you describe what 2023 was like at the movies, Joanna? I think it was a real invitation back to the movies. Um, we saw this year that blockbusters weren't as strong. Marvel movies maybe weren't as strong as they had been in the past. And that cleared the way for some of these incredibly important and original and really interesting films. Um, again, as varied as Barbie and Oppenheimer. Um, great to see actors acting again and, uh, you know, not just donning their costumes. Um, and there's a bunch to look forward to still for us in 2024 because we have
have yet to award our Best Canadian Feature Film and Best Canadian Documentary Film Prizes. That's going to happen in March. Well, Joanna, I have to ask, any honorable mentions that didn't make the list? Um, I, it's Unfortunately, we cut everything down to three nominees, so there are a lot of worthy films out there that we weren't able to honor. I think a lot of us were disappointed that we didn't get to honor Maestro, Bradley Cooper's movie about Leonard Bernstein, and um, also Priscilla, uh, the great film from Sofia Coppola about Priscilla Presley. So there's really good reasons to go to the movies this holiday season. All right, we'll leave it there. Joanna Schneller, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thanks, thank you. Joanna. Happy